making the Hope Diamond appear its unique color of blue. The Hope Diamond is one of the most unique objects in the world. Look at how many other blue diamonds comparable to the Hope Diamond have been found, and the answer is zero. There may not be another diamond quite like the Hope, but gems can come in a surprising array of colors. We all know emeralds are green, rubies red, and sapphires blue. Well, frankly, that's just plain wrong. Is this a sapphire? This is blue. It looks like a sapphire. It's nice and big, but it's not sapphire. You can't go by color. In fact, none of these green stones are emeralds. Yet surprisingly, all of these are what we call sapphires. Color is something that Mike Scott is passionate about and wants to understand in everything from brilliant gemstones to the koi fish he keeps in his backyard. Color brings out all kinds of emotion, just like smells do. I enjoy the complexity or, or understanding uh, how things work. To me, color sets what mood I'm in. Scott has amassed what is considered one of the world's most important collections of gems outside of a royal family. Mike Scott is one of the world's great connoisseurs of gems. He goes out of his way to find the most beautiful colored stones. And each of those colored stones is telling us a story. Part of my collection is to show there's more to the world than sapphire, ruby, and emerald. Scott may not have a diamond quite like the Hope, but he has collected diamonds in almost every known color, including yellow, green, pink, and even the rarest, red. Scott's rainbow collection was made possible by Apple computers. He made his fortune as the first CEO, taking it from Steve Jobs' garage to going public on Wall Street. I hand-built the first 10 Apple IIs. But Scott says his first task at Apple came not from Steve Jobs, but the other employees at the time. My first job as president of Apple was to tell Steve Jobs he had to take a bath. It seems that Steve's special diet was creating body odor. He negotiates everything, so he agreed to take a bath more often, and I had to agree to read his diet book, hopefully that it would cause me to lose some weight which it didn't. Scott didn't plan on investing his fortune in gemstones, but he got hooked the first time he tried to buy himself an expensive one, because it turned out to be a fake. That got me further interested in how do you know the difference, uh, since you can't just tell by color and by looking at a stone. A physicist by training, Scott wants to better understand the nature of minerals, materials that are crystalline in structure and include gemstones. Scott is so devoted to this pursuit that he has removed all the traditional furniture from his Silicon Valley living room and turned it into a world-class gem and mineral lab. Out with the couch, in with the Raman spectrometer. Mike Scott has put part of his fortune into building the world's largest database of minerals, their structures, their properties, their optical characteristics. So we understand this rich realm, the kingdom of minerals, in much more complexity and completeness than we ever have before. Today, Scott is analyzing a sapphire, a 30 carat one. This one's from Sri Lanka. Like the Hope Diamond, it's blue. But how it got its color is a completely different geologic story. Sapphires are actually more rare than diamonds. Making one requires the force of moving mountains, literally. Sapphires are formed in Earth's crust, not the deeper mantle where diamonds form. During the geologic process of plate tectonics, all the continents on Earth ride on giant tectonic plates pushed and pulled by heat deep within the earth. For likely billions of years, the continents have moved around, crashing over and under each other, causing earthquakes and pushing up huge mountains. Beneath Earth's surface, 
heat and pressure created from the massive friction liquefy rock that reforms into new minerals, sometimes sapphires. Many of the best sapphires come from the island nation of Sri Lanka.